Hello friends, today I'll talk about PostgreSQL and in this tutorial I'll be talking about how to install PostgreSQL and learn basic admin stuff. So literally this particular tutorial will help you start your journey on PostgreSQL. If you want to learn PostgreSQL and you don't know how to install it, you want to install the PostgreSQL and you want to start your journey, this is the tutorial for you. And in this particular tutorial, I'll be covering two different versions, version 10 and version 11. And one version, the version 11, I'll be covering using the GUI, uh, sorry, using the YUM installation, command line installation. And version 10, I'll be using the GUI version. So to use the YUM or the command line version 11, you can go to the Postgres. So let me click on www.postgresql.org. And under, if you go here, you'll find this particular link or you can click on download. So whichever you want, you, once you click on the download, it shows which operating system family. So Linux, and then it tells us the distribution, which distribution you want to use. So I'm using Red Hat. And then it gives us this particular form, the for the YUM repository, if you click it, can see, it gives us this particular format. And as I said, I'll be using version 11. So let me, Click on version 11 and platform version 6. I am using Red Hat 6 and then uh, architecture whether it is 32, 64 bit or 32 bit. I'll go with 64 bit and then it gives us this set of commands. So I'll not use all of these commands. I only need the install repository and install PostgreSQL. So I'll be only using these two commands. So let me copy this and put it in a notepad. Okay, so I am logged in as root. So, okay, so it copied everything. So I am logged in as a root, so I don't need to do sudo. If you if you are not logged in as a root and if you have sudo permission, you can use the sudo. So, so how did I get these two commands? Again, let me show you. I went to postgresql.org. Then I clicked on download. Then I clicked which operating system family, then which distribution, and then it came up with this particular format. I chose version 11, then OS, and then architecture. And it gave me this command, which I used the copy script from here. Or what I can do is I can just click this. So if I click this, and if I put it in notepad, you will see that I have copied. So the first command is going to install the YUM repository. And the second command is one which is going to install the software, the PostgreSQL 11 R for us so let's do that let me clear my screen and let me prof d okay so let me open the terminal and let me hit this and it's going to install so i have already installed the repository if i if you want to see the repository i can do m repo list grep minus i push grace and let's see so I got all this repository for version 11, 10, 9.5, 9.6 and version 12. So I got this repository already been set up. So once that repository has been set up using this particular command, the next command would be to install the PostgreSQL. So what I'll do is I'll click. So before installing, let me show you if I have anything with the RPM minus QA grep minus I Postgres. So let's see if I have anything with the Postgres. So I have got Postfix. So uh literally nothing with postgres so let's do that again and you can as you can see i don't have anything installed with postgres so let me hit this command again from where i got this command i got this particular command from here so i'm just hitting that particular command to install my postgres server and if everything so it's going to install this postgres 11 lips and postgres 11 server so it's going to install these two packages for us and if everything goes fine, then we will have our Postgres. So it's going to install the server and the libs and this particular directories, uh, files that it's going to install. And if everything goes fine, we will have our Postgres SQL installed in our machine. So let me close all this. Okay. So looks installed, installed, installed. So it looks like everything is installed. So let me now run the same command to find out what packages I got. So I got this 
three packages related to Postgres 11. Everything is version 11.9. So I have installed version 11.9 of Postgres SQL. And what I did was, uh, as of now, I have just ran two commands. One is this yum command to install the yum repository and the second command to install the Postgres. And with these two commands, my Postgres has been installed. Right now, the Postgres has only been installed. It has not been initialized or it has not been started. So what is the initialization? Initialization is the concept in Postgres where you tell to the Postgres where your data directory will be. So you tell Postgres where your uh, database will be. So we need to do that initialization. And to do the initialization, we need to fire a command called initDB. So to do that initDB command, to do this init db command we need to look you need to go to that installation so where the postgres got installed so if i show you user under this i should have shown you before installing that uh, this particular directory was not there so if you see under under usr if i do ls minus l you will find one directory called pg sql 11 what I can do is I can, okay, let me repeat this. Let me, what I'll do is let me clear this for you. So I'm deleting this. So now if you see, I don't have anything with PG SQL 11. Okay. So literally that is gone. Let me go back and RPM minus QA grab Postgres. Let me uninstall the Postgres. Let me uninstall the Postgres. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so these are the three packages. RPM minus E minus no depths. Take the first package, put it here. That's done. Then the next package is left with two. That's done. And then this is the last package. That's done and we have now let me do it again rpm minus qa grep postgres and I don't have anything and I am under USR directory and if I show ls minus l I don't have anything starting with p sql so what we'll do now again we will use the same command to install the Postgres. So we are installing the Postgres and if everything goes fine, we will have our Postgres SQL installed, not started. It just, we are just doing the installation. So we are installing the Postgres and if everything goes fine, we will have our Postgres SQL installed. And once we have everything Postgres installed, we will have one folder under the USR with psql 11 because we are installing version 11 if you see the version i said is 11 so once that is done so let's see so it's it's all complete we have successfully installed and if i do ls minus l you see i got this particular directory which was not present before after local i got sbin but now between local and sbin i got this pg sql 11 so my pg sql has been initialized so now what i'll do is uh, let me close this. Let me close this. So I got this. Okay. So let me close this as well. So open another terminal. So I have two terminals. So I'll keep this side by side. So I can show you what I'm doing. So the, here I'll do connect as Postgres user. So what I'll do now is I'll show you if there is anything with Postgres running. So okay. So I got some old version of postgres which is still running let me kill all these processes kill minus nine five seven zero two okay clear 
okay so i i don't have anything with the postgres right now running uh and i have logged in as a postgres user and if i show you okay let me log out as a postgres user so both the terminals are so if i do ps minus ef postgres you can see that i don't have anything with the postgres right now running so only thing that we have done as of now is we have installed our postgres if i do this command again you see i got these three packages installed and under this i got one folder called pg sql 11 so what we need to do next is we need to initialize the data directory to initialize the data directory we need to tell using the pg data command where is our data directory so where are we going to store our database and all the related files so that particular thing is we are going to set that into pg data directory so what will i'll do is like let's see whether i got this particular directory so cd here and i don't have that directory so let's create that particular directory so since i'll be installing okay so that's done and then that's done and also i'll be installing version 10 so let me create another directory for version 10 so right now if i do the cd command you can see that i got this particular directory and this is the directory this is the directory where the database will be stored for version 11 this is the directory that i created so if i go to this particular directory if i go to this particular directory now i created two folders called data 10 this particular directory for the version 10 database this particular directory for the version 11 and right now we are into version 11 because i have installed version 11.9 so we are into so i'll be using this particular directory and since these directories are created by the root so i need to give the permission to postgres user so what i will do is ch own minus r recursively to postgres dba db to d slash postgres so once that is done if i do ls minus l from root the permissions have been changed to postgres user so and if i go to data 11 you will see that it is completely blank why am i doing this yeah it's completely blank if i show you pwd that's the directory where we will be and it is completely blank so what i'll do now is what is the command that we need to initialize is init db but before in initializing we need to tell to the postgres user which data directory we want to initialize using the pg data variable and where is this init db it is there in the install folder installation directory and that installation is under the usr so let's do that so let me connect as postgres user go to the user directory then go to P pg sql 11 go to the bin directory and under this let's see if we have an utility called init db and you can see we have a executable called init db and this particular init db will allow us to initialize this particular data directory so here also i'll connect as postgres user and go to that particular directory and show you this and right now there is nothing so what i'll do is i'll take the i'll take the i'll take the data directory name and i'll use the export pg data equals this so that's done and then what i'll do is like i'll hit the init db so this is what i'm going to do so i go into this particular directory and i'm going to hit this init db and before init db using the pg data command i said which data directory i want to initialize so init db is initialized db so we, so that's what we are going to do and if i hit this particular command under the bin under the bin and specifying which data directory we want to initialize and you do that and you come here and you see this particular folder was empty and now is populated so i got this and not only it tells us which what is the command what is the command it also tells us the what is the command to start our postgres so pgctl is the command that we'll be using to start our postgres so what are the options what is the data directory 
where we we want to start our database server what is the log file name and what is the start so we will be using this pgctl so pgctl start to start pgctl stop to stop and pgctl restart to restart so let me so the next command would be pgctl then the data directory which we want to start and the log file that we want to provide and start stop so what are the options for pg sql so pgctl then the data directory start stop restart and when you when you when you want to do the pgctl you will specify which directory you want to start which server you want to start so if you have multiple you can use so from version 11 i am starting the database server of version 11 from version 10 i'll be starting the data data server of version 10 start stop and restart and the command would be pgctl so uh, let's do that so before doing that what i'll do is i'll show you so let me clear the screen if if anything with the postgres is running so postgres so i'll get some output and this is all the postgres because two sessions i have connected if you see i've connected here and here so these are all the postgres sessions and nothing the postgres right now is not running or what i can also do you show you is i can actually use nested minus a and grab listen and grab 5432 so what is this 5432 5432 is the default port of the postgres and if you if you don't know that port you can say you can just search default postgres sql port and it should show you that it is 5432 so the default port is 5432 and let's see if it is listening right now and as you can see using the nested command i found out that 5432 is not at listening and nothing of the postgres is also running so we will use this pgctl command we'll use this pgctl command to start the postgres and so i'll take this command i'll take this particular command but what i'll do is i'll modify the the location of log to put the log also in the same directory as my data directory so so that's i have done and i said pgctl okay the pgctl so let me take this okay why don't i launch a putty session to make my life easier okay Postgres. Oh, what is the username? This is not correct username. Duplicate session. P O S T G R E S. Let me close this and let's wait for it to prompt. And I'm connected. So what I'll do is we now we have seen that we have nothing with the postgres running and we don't have anything with the 5432 running we don't have anything with the 5432 running so we need to start the postgres and to start the postgres we will be using the pgctl command with the start option so we'll be using this particular command so what we need to do is we'll say cd slash uh, where is this particular pgctl so we'll go to that particular directory so we'll go cd slash usr then under this you'll find a directory called pg sql 11 so let me go under that so right now i am under this and under this you'll find another directory called bin and under this if i do pg ctl you'll find that we have an executable called pg ctl which i'll be using to start the postgres sql so to start the postgres sql we'll say pg ctl we'll use this pg ctl then we'll say minus d which data directory we want to start so this is the data directory that we want to initialize so i'm starting that and i'll be using that minus d then minus l and i'll specify the log file name so log file this is the log file name using minus l option and then i'll be using option called start and that server started and if i now do nest at minus an you can see the port 5432 is listening on the local address 127 this is a loopback local ip and 
you if i do ps minus ef grep this you can see that all the checkpoint logger wall writer all of these processes came so our postgres seems to have started so now what we will do is the postgres again i'll repeat the postgres has been started using the command called pgctl when i started pgctl i specified the uh, i specified what is the data directory what is the log file and i use the option called start if you want to stop it you will pass the option called stop if you want to restart it you will pass the option called restart so pgctl is the command which you can use to start stop and restart your database server so once that is done now we need to connect to our postgres so how do we connect so i'll so what i'll do is i'll set my environment variable so export pg data is equal to this environment variable and i'll use the p sql and you can see that i am now right now connected to 11.9 so so i right now i have been i have connected to my p sql database server which is version 11.9 so we we install the p postgres we initialize it the first command was the install of the rpm the next command was install of the server and the third command was so right now we have only done three things install install the rpm the m repository install the server and the third command that we ran was the init db sorry we ran the fourth command and also we started the pgctl uh, sorry postgres server using the pgctl command so that's what we have done and then we use the psql command to connect to our postgres so now what i'll do is i'll show you some of the basic command so going before going to the basic command i want to tell you that there are two important files postgres sql.conf and pghba.com and i'll show you what are the contents of these files in a minute but before that slash l to see the list of databases slash du to see the users connect db name or cdb name to connect to a particular database select current database to select which database you are connected to slash dt to see the tables slash db to see the views slash dn for schemas slash q or slash quit to quit let me repeat slash l to see the databases slash du to see the users connect database name to connect to the database name slash dt to see the tables slash db to see the views slash dn to see the schemas slash q to quit and two important files that we need to be aware is postgres sql.conf and pghba.conf these particular files can be found under the data directory so now i'll go to that particular data directory i'll open one more session okay i'm going to put it here i'm going to put it here so much time it is taking okay sometimes it does that so did my firewall started no okay so for some reason that did not come in the duplicate session did not came in so this one came in so now let me close this put the okay so here so what what i will do is i'll go to that particular data directory where is our data directory data 11 and under this if i show you star.conf you 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 can see that i got this postgres sql.conf and pghba.com and if i show you what are the contents of this file so these are the two files that you need to be aware as of now cat so if you see here it tells us what kind of connections are pghba.conf pghba.conf what are the types of connections it allow it is allowed so local allowed uh, all types of local allowed on the host ipv4 only if it is coming from the local host it is allowed ipv6 is if it is only from the local host it is allowed so basically pghba.conf tells us what kind of connections are allowed let me do one thing let me clear the screen and do this tail minus 20 so what kind of 
connections are allowed is been told by pghba.conf and where is this conf file this is under the data directory that we initialize under this you will find two important file called pghba.conf and postgres this is also important but right now i'll just concentrate on pghba.conf and postgres sql.conf these two files i'll consider it what is the postgres sql.conf file is it will tell the postgres about all the memory uh, listen address port all all of that so if i told you that 5432 is the default port and that particular port is been defined here so if i say grep uh, port you will find that 5432 so right now it is commented and by default it listens on uh, i don't have to if i want to use 5432 i don't have to uncomment it you can uncomment it but defaultly postgres sql listens on 5432 that's why we got this 5432 and that particular information is there in the postgres sql so that the two important file that you need to be aware is postgres sql.conf and pghba.conf the pghba.conf tells us the types of con con types of connections it is allowing and postgres.sql.conf actually it's a pretty big file so if i do this one more time uh, clear and if i do this one more time you'll find lot of the parameters in this memory auto vacuum lot of the parameters that you will find and as you learn the postgres you will know what is each parameter doing and what is the importance of that parameter so, so you will not change all of the parameter but based on your requirements you might change some of the parameters so postgres sql.conf is the file which will contains all the memory settings the port address the listen address all of that and the pghba.conf is the file which allows the connections and we already saw pgctl to start stop and uh, restart so now what we will do is we have also seen these commands not now what we will do is we will go to this pg admin the pg admin is another tool so we can download that pg admin tool and the pg admin is the another tool which allows us to monitor the postgres so let's do that so let me launch pg admin 4 so it's launching the pg admin for me and it will ask okay so what i'll do is so i don't have any connection so what i'll try to do is i'll try to make a connection to this particular postgres that we have just installed this particular version 11.9 so i'll try to install make a connection so what's my ip so let me get my ip that's actually i know that ip but i just wanted to show you so uh, i have config not ip config so 192.168.1.101 so let me put that ip so let me say create so i went to i launched this pg admin let me on the servers right click create server and i'll say here i'll give the name so let me say the name as pg sql 11 because i'm connecting to version 11 or and if you have multiple host you can say what is the host so if you say db1 so that's the host name so you, i'm connecting to host db1 and i'm connected to version 11 so you can do something like that this is just a name that you want to do then once you have given this name the connection either the ip address the host name or the ip address so i'll put the ip address the default port is 5432 the username is postgres and the password is password so let me put the password and let me paste it here and let's see if we are able to connect and looks like we are not able to connect okay unable to connect to the server let's see okay my firewall has started my firewall is preventing that particular port so let's disable the firewall for 60 minutes okay so now let's me try this again and let's see could not connect to server connection refuse so it seems initially when my firewall was on i got the connection timeout i disabled my firewall and now i got this connection refused which means and let me see if i can if i open the command prompt if i can connect i can ping to this particular server and i can ping and you see i have opened this two putty sessions so i am able to connect from my windows machine to this particular server but right now the postgres is not ready to connect so what we need to do is we need to we so tcp ip connections on 5432 so let's check that uh, we'll go here and we'll use the netstat command netstat 
माइनस ए एन ग्रेप लिसन ग्रेप फाइव फोर थ्री टू एंड यू इफ यू सी इट इज ओनली लिस्निंग ऑन दिस लोकल पोर्ट इट इज नॉट लिस्निंग ऑन ऑल द IP addresses, which is why I'm not allowed to connect from any other. So what we need to do is we need to change this so that the Postgres listens on all the addresses, not only on the local IP. Where is that information? And as I told you, there are two files which are important. So let's go to this particular file. Let's go to that particular file, and let me put this G edit here and. Okay, so let me put this, and under this you will find a particular parameter called listen addresses, and you see that it is currently only listening to the local host. So what I'll do is I'll change this to star, so it listens to all the addresses and uncommented, and so that's done. So I have uncommented it. and let me now save this particular file so if i do this grab and if i do grab minus i listen you will find that now i am listening on this particular so i have changed this particular postgres.sql.conf and let's come back here and let's see whether it started listening so although i have changed it i have not restarted my postgres server which which is why the it is still not listening on all the addresses so what i'll do is i'll take this same old command that we used let me show if i have that history so this is the command so i'll take the same command but this time i'll use the option called restart okay so stopped and started so it restart did stop and start and if i come here and run this command you can see previously 5432 was only listening on the local address now it is listening on all the addresses now we'll go back to pg admin again and we'll click on trying again so now we got the that particular message check the port 5432 previously we got the 5432 that message is gone and now it is saying pg hba conf entry so we need to now go to this another file and check why why we are not ping allowed why we are not allowed so let's go to that particular directory uh, sorry file and again that particular file is also in the same data directory if you see here that would be a file called pg hba so that would be a file called pg hba conf and if i we are this particular file and under this particular file i'll tell what connections are allowed so for ipv4 for ipv4 it is only allowing the local connections if you see here address so what i'll do is like i'll, I'll change this to all and i'll say trust to md5 i'll say md5 so now i'll save this and again for this to be effective i will restart my server so then once i have restarted let me click on okay and see and then i got another message password authentication failed for user postgres and if you see when i did my init db i did not specify the password password which means i have not and i will be using this alter user command to set the password so alter user postgres so this is the user that i'll be changing with the password and i'll be passing what password i need to change so you, if you see what what are the steps that i followed is i tried to connect locally i was able to connect locally i was able to connect so i have no problem connecting locally but when i was trying to connect to the remote i got errors so i the first error that i got was on the listen address which i i made changes in this particular file the postgres.conf in this particular file i made the listen addresses to star once that is done i started listening on all the port uh, on all the addresses for port 5432 then i tried connecting and i got a message that there is no entry particular for this particular host and i went to this particular file and i changed the ipv4 so if i do if i do this and if i show you the last 20 lines and if i show you that for ipv4 i did host all all and md5 
which allowed me to connect using the pg admin so that's that's done so now my connection but still i'm not able to connect because now it is complaining about the password so now what i'll do is i'll take this particular command alter user to connect change the password of this user and it said alter role which means this is successful and if i if everything goes fine i'll save the password if everything goes fine then we will be able to connect and you can see that i have now connected to my postgresql and if i click here and if i click on if i click on properties okay so yeah so if you see here i am on 192.168 I am on port 5432. I am Postgres 11.9, and I got this database called Postgres database. So uh, by default, this is the database that it shows, and I have been able to make a connection. So we we did lot of things to reach here. It was not a simple journey. Uh, if I have to put it again, so first thing that we did is we installed the YAM repository. YAM repository then we install the yum server then then we created the data directory then we gave the permission to postgres user for that particular data data directory then we use the then we use the pg data command to set the data directory location then we use the command init db once we did the unit db we use the command pgctl to start our instance then locally we were able to connect using psql but we were not able to connect remotely to connect to remote to connect via remote using pg admin what we did is in the p postgres.con file postgres.con file we made the changes so that it listens on all the addresses so listen addresses we change the parameter called listen addresses to star then once that is done we restarted our server so it started listening on all the addresses so we restarted the server uh, but we still were not able to connect so we then changed the pghba.conf entry to allow for all the hosts and then we again restarted and we were still not able to connect and then what we did we altered the user password of postgres user and then finally we were able to connect to our pg admin so that's done so now i'll go back to here and i'll uh, quit again and let me clear start the next session so we will now learn some of the commands that we show which, which i showed you before so slash l to see the databases so slash l to see the databases so let me minimize the screen and clear the screen sorry quit and clear and again and slash l to see so these are the by default this template 0 and template 1 and postgres databases are been created so these are the three databases these are the three databases and if i want to connect to if i want to create a database i'll say create database test and if if everything goes fine i'll have my database created so let's see l previously i got three rows now i got four rows and i got my test database created so the command was create database test if i want to connect to that okay let me quit and let me clear and use the psql and if i say select if I say select current database, if I use this particular command, it will show that by default I have been connected to Postgres database. So what I'll do now, I will say connect to test, and now you are connected to database test is user. And if I say test, then you see when I just launch my psql, I've been connected to by default a database called Postgres. I use this connect test. So I connected to the test database and I connected to test. And if I come here, you can see only one database. If I refresh this, now you should be able to see that I have got a test database. So I have got two databases, the Postgres and tests. And since I have been connected as a Postgres user, the Postgres user has all the authority to connect to every database because it's a super user. 
So what we will do now is under the Postgres user, under the Postgres, let's see if there are any tables. So slash dt. So do not find any relationship. So what I will do is like I'll try to create a particular table. So okay, and if that gets successful, I see I got one table called table which is test. So I got one table. So previously did not find any relations. I created a particular table, and you see I got this particular table created. So the dt is the command to create the table. Now let me clear the screen. Sorry, let me quit and come come back again. So next command is dv to see the views. And if you see did not find any relationships, so I don't have any views. So what I'll do is like I'll create the view using this particular command. So okay select stuff okay so what happened is this the by default the table that we created was in the was in the test database and by default whenever you launch psql you are connected to yeah by you are connected to postgres so what we need to do is we need to connect to test then we will see if there are any views no views then we'll create this particular view that got successful and now you see i got one view called vtest and it says it's a view so we got our view created as well so let me quit again clear and now i'll launch again and if you du is the command to see the users so right now i got one user called postgres so what i'll do is like i'll connect another user called uh where is the user okay so i'll create a user called subod so let me fire this command and if i say du again so now i got another user called subod and it, he doesn't have any permission and by default the user will have a permission to log in uh only the permission to log in no other permission so what i'll do now is like i'll come here and i'll say create server and i'll connect to this again so i'll say db1 uh pg sql 11 and as subodh okay so that's the connection so now the db1 that's what i'm connecting 5432 is the default port and the user that i want to connect is subodh and with the password is password so i want to connect to this using this so the connection has been successful and let me try to okay so when i right click on this i don't i only get an option to refresh but if i right click on the user on the postgres user see i got a create database and that particular option is not here that particular option is not available for this particular user subodh so because he doesn't have the authority to create the database so what i'll do now is i will grant this particular if and you can see here that this particular user does not have any authority to create the, so what i'll do is like i'll give him the super user so that we can do using alter role suppose super user create db so i'm giving him this three roles so let me do that and let me now show you the users so you see the subot which had no permissions has got now super user create role and create db and we gave those just now using alter role command so we gave the user subodh the permissions to create the database and create roles and if i now click here i do okay if i click here still i cannot so let me disconnect yeah let me disconnect and let me now connect okay and let me now connect again and it's asking for the password i should save it don't want to prompt it again and again and now if i right click on it you see i got this create database option because this particular user subodh user is able to create that particular database so now what we can do let me pause there is a lot of disturbance outside let me pause the video for a minute okay anyway so uh, what i'll do if you if you see the if i see here uh, let me now so let me connect this to database called test okay so i have connected to the database called test now and if i go to the dashboard once again you will see okay i don't see that 
okay so if you see i got two connections to database so this database test i got three connections right now so now what i'll do is i'll launch one more session export pg data to db2d slash postgres slash data 11 and if i do p sql and if i show you the database called test and what i want to do 